This is I may, oh, this is I may have the green not. Room. Ooh, yeah. Hi, you know, green I see, room. I may have not <clears throat> eaten kitty yet in a spar, but like you know, I'm still pretty good. I'm still doing okay. pretty good. You find yourselves taking up a circle formation again with Analy at the head, and she's practically buzzing. Who's ready for some games? Because I know I am. She cheers. She doesn't seem to mind that Altair is once again not in the circle. It's a little. Uh, what kind of games? Remy asks for a moment. It's a little bold for Remy, but it's nice to see that he's interested. Annalee strikes a dramatic pose, pointing at Remy, who, to his credit, only minorly stiffens. I'm glad you asked, Remy. She declares. She lets her arm fall, and Remy relaxes. I've actually got three different question, question games for us to try. I think they'll really help us all get to know each other. Which is the first step into making bonds. And when you make bonds, you start to figure out what the kind of people that make you happy, you know? Also, I think it helps you learn about yourself, which is... Altair injects. Interjects. Anna, we don't... Why don't you just tell us the games? Anna Leish laughs sheepishly. <laughs> oh, right. Sorry about that. <laughs> I ramble sometimes, if you couldn't tell. She refocuses with a conscious effort. Anyway, the names of the games <laughs> that rhymes are Two Truths and a Lie, Deserted Island, and I Am. For now, let's start with Two Truths and a Lie. I'm really excited about this one. <laughs> so, the way you play is each we will each take turns telling two truths about ourselves and one lie. And then the rest of the circle has to try to guess which one's the lie. She explains. Those rules sound pretty self-explanatory. Damien's eyes Annalee as if he were sizing her up. How do I win? He demands. Marshy fixes him with a questioning look. Was he suddenly feeling competitive? He hadn't cared for this place or the icebreaker at all, but maybe he was finally warming up to this whole oasis thing. If only you could get back, you could get back in the spirit. It's hard because your headache is still roaring at your temples. How do you win? Annalee echoes, surprised. Well, I hadn't really thought we'd play for stakes, but... What are games without stakes? Damien huffs, crossing his arms. Annalee considers it for a moment before nodding. I like that competitiveness! Okay, how about this? If you manage to guess the lie, you'll get a point. Whoever has the most points at the end wins. She decides. Altair, could you keep count? Sure, I guess. She beams. Thanks a bunch! Okay, who wants to go first? Me! Me! I want to go first! Oh my god. Sure, you can start us off. Remember, you're giving us two truths and one lie. Annalise says, giving Swans a thumbs up. Swan doesn't even take a moment to think, it just eagerly spits out her response. Okay, um, I broke a crossbow, people thought I was a criminal on two separate occasions, and I work for the Admiral. She grins up as she finishes. Looking around the circle, a few people begin talking all at once, resulting in a swarm of voices with no distinguishable words. Annalise raises her voice. One at a time, please! We don't want... Why don't we raise our hands if we have a guess, and I'll call on you. The circle quiets and Cameron is the first one to raise his hand. Cameron! Annalee calls. It's definitely the crossbow. The other two are too specific, man. Cameron guesses confidently. Nope. Try again! Cameron's face falls. Huh? Come on, for real? How'd you break it? He presses. Well, okay, so I may or may not have used it like a club one too many times. It's fine. I got a new one. Swan explains with a shrug. She she seems to be enjoying this exercise. Catherine smiles. If you're not careful, I suspect you'll soon have several more broken crossbows under your belt. She teases. Catherine! Annalie interrupts. You'll have to tell us that story later. Alright, who wants to go next? Damien raises his hand, albeit stiffly, and Annalee is quick to call on him. Damien, go ahead! Damien looks at Swan. Whoever this Admiral is, I doubt you work for them. Swan narrows her eyes at the tone. And why is that? She presses. Your uniform looks far too drab. 
those of power just their subordinates well because of their extensions of themselves and therefore represent them. You do not do that, Demon reasons bluntly. Instead of flushing with embarrassment, Swan seems to burn with anger. How did you know it's a uniform? She sputters, glaring across the circle. And hey, my uniform is stylish, okay? She protests. Marshy, you've left staring at Swan with mild concern. This is the most heated, heated you've ever seen her. You really didn't take her to be the type to get so worked up with this kind of thing. Damien? Yeah, this was expected of him. Damien smirks. Am I wrong? Swan fumes. No. I would for someone that's, under the admiral. That's what I thought, Damien notes smugly. Swan huffs. Hey, Damien's being mean! She complains, looking at Annalie's way. He is just a bully. Don't let him bother you! Ma Marianne advises, unbothered. But I am bothered! Annalie holds up her hands, pl placed saintly. Alright, all right. let's, let's all try to play nice, okay? Damien, I know you didn't mean. Damien interjects, I meant every word. <laughs> but not in a mean way, I'm sure. Aunt Millie continues, undeterred. She smiles warmly at Damien, who Marcy realizes is talking a lot more than he normally does. Maybe he really is getting into the spirit. Remy suddenly comes to a, real to a realization. Wait, you were suspect twice? Aren't you a guard? The question is confused. Great question, Remy! Annalise says, eagerly jumping at the opportunity to change subjects. Swan, do you feel up to answering? Swan gets this look on her face, and it's clear that she's got a tale to tell. No, well, why not? Okay, so you see, back in Bastios, which is sort of where I'm from... Anyway, in Bastios, the Navy thought I was a pirate for a bit. And then here, my boss, who was not yet my boss at the time, thought I was one of the guys he was after because my jacket's similar to the criminals. It was wild. She explains. That sure sounds wild. Annalie agrees, a little wide-eyed. Swan nods. Oh, it was. Actually, my boss is kind of a jerk. You know, he invited me and my friend to lunch just to try and figure out if we were the criminals. He acted like he was all nice, but he was just tricking us. I'm still mad about it. She rants, hands moving just as much as her mouth has been talking. Yes, this is exactly what we're after, everyone! Sharing our feelings with each other. I'm so proud of you, Swan. I'm sorry to hear he did that to you. Annalise says. Thank you for saying that. Annalise smiles. Okay, that's one point for Damien. Who wants to go next? Can I give it a go? Remy requests. Of course you can. Give us your truths and a lie. Annalise replies eagerly. Remy takes a breath and, without, without looking at the floor, speaks. I'm from Teramos. I won my grade school science fair, and I can't do magic. He rattles off. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't answer. I, I know this one. That's very sweet of you to let others figure it out first. Anna Lake praises. Marshy's quick to raise her hand. <gasps> oh, Marshy! Marshy frowns, concentrating. Um, I think you're not from Teramos? She guesses. Remy shakes his head with a knowing smile. But you seem to fit in Erwin so well. I've only been here for like the last two college semesters. Remy admits, and Marshy can only sulk at her loss at a potential point. That leaves two left. Which one is the lie? Annalie wonders aloud. Mm -hmm. Catherine raises her hand and Annalie calls on her. I struggle to believe you can't do magic. Catherine states. Most are capable of at least some. Mummy once again shakes his head. He <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Remy, I don't mean a lot. I don't mean a lot. He actually only got a participation award at his grade school science fair, Dan explains. And right after his family took a picture and his project caught on fire. He has the image up in his kitchen. <laughs> Remy nods. That's exactly right. Annalie beams. Aw, I'm so excited to see people be in such good- be good such- ugh. I'm so excited to see people be such good friends! She exclaims. That's one point to Dan. Hell yeah. Dan, language! Annalie scolds, frowning. 
The scold's frowning. Dan offers a sheep a smile. Sorry. All right, who's next? I will go, Damien decides. Then before Annalee can say anything, he continues. I'm the Prince of Dreamos. I nearly killed someone by accident with an overcharged projectile spell. Twice. And my only goal is to return home to my wife. What? Huh? You're a prince? What? Huh? Marcia, you're blown away by the potential truths and lies. Not only are they wild, but you're not even sure which is the lie. Damien a prince? It's hard to imagine his grumpy self and nobility, let alone royalty. But again, he's pretty picky. And the part about him having nearly killed someone, that's a little scary. It happened twice, even. Damien seemed very skilled with magic. He wouldn't accidentally hurt someone with it, would he? Maybe that's a lie. What are you supposed to even think about the wife one? Does Damien have a wife? Could Damien have a wife? He's never shared this much about himself, ever! Annalie attempts to interject but before things get out of control. Remember to raise your hand! No, I! Call BS on that. There is no way you're a prince or have a wife! Swan protests, cutting Annalie off. Annalie smiles patiently and tries again. Swan, remember to use your nice words! Th those words were way nicer than what I could have said. Swan argues, jabbing a finger in Damien's general direction. Catherine sighs disappointingly. Swan, I'm sorry. Annalie smiles. Uh, Dan, go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're no prince. Yeah, no, you're no prince. You're no prince? You're no prince. Are you Damien? Dan responds, pointing a lazy finger in Damien's way. You, you, you could have at least hesitated a little. Damien sputters, almost losing his composure. He averts his gaze, pride wounded. Fine, yes, you're correct. Congratulations. He emits in the most annoyed tone you've ever heard. Dan just grins. Yeah, <laughs> knew it. Marcia, you realize that if that's the lie, then his other two statements were truths. And that means... What? Huh? Wait, you have a wife?! <laughs> Damien turns to Marcia and his face is red, whether from embarrassment, anger, or frustration. You'll never know. Oh, I'll, I'll explain later. He hisses. Man, Damien sure is animated today. Maybe it's because he had a turn in his wand at the door? And only clears his... clears her throat. Although, it's possible that she was trying to hide a laugh. <laughs> Uh, thank you for sharing, Damien. I think we've all learned more about you today. <laughs> she says, and Damien can, could not look less happy about it. Another point to Dan. Who's next? She asks. Janet raises her hand. You should, like, let me. Annalie nods. Okay, Janet. You have the floor. Okay. So, like, I've never adopted a puppy, just fostered. I was, like, supposed to be named Ilya, and, like, oh, I hate cheese. Janet lists, counting on her fingers after each statement. Once done, she looks up, pleased. Cameron is less so. You what? He shouts, arms extended as if he were pleading. Shut it, cheese boy. Janet is dismissively waving him off. Now... Annalie starts, trying not to giggle at the inspired nickname. <laughs> Cameron has a name. Cameron in interrupts. Nah, cheese boy is an honor. Annalie stares at Cameron for a moment and then at Janet before shrugging. Who wants to take a guess? She asks, moving on. Um, I think I know. Annalie nods. All right, Are... take it away, Marshy. Marshy spares Cameron a sorrowful glance. Sorry to say this, cheese boy, but I think hating cheese is the truth. No! Cameron guessed, horrified. The lie is about the puppy. You totally adopted one, or two, maybe seven. Marcia continues dropping the dramatics for cheer. How did you, like, figure it out? Janet demands, surprised. Because you love puppies. Annalie beams. Aw, tell us about your dog, Janet! Okay, so like, her name's Diamond, because she's like, the most precious thing in my life, and like, she shines like a diamond for real. Jan Janet replies almost tearfully. Aw, they sound precious. 
Janet grins. You bet. And that's Marshy's point. More fostering of such good feelings, everyone. Let's keep it up. Annalie cheers. Who wants to go next? She asks. Cameron raises his hand. Hey, let me have a go. All right, Cameron, give us your truths and lie. Annalie says. Cameron throws out his arms in excitement, parading it in. Awesome, so I'm late on my rent. I want to start a cheese emporium, and my favorite cheese is Asiago, Cameron says. This time, Marianne raises her hand, and Annalie calls on her. Marianne! Marianne looks at Cameron dead in the eye. You love cheese, so I can see the emporium bit. And you having a favorite, so you're not late on rent, are you? She reasons. <laughs> nah, I, I, I'm actually am. Cameron chuckles, mildly unnerved by Marianne's dead-on stare, but that just seems to be a feature of her personality. Marianne blinks. Are you okay? She hesitantly asks. Cameron waves it off, and honestly, there should probably be a lot more concern on his face, but it's non-existent. I'll be fine. I just invested some funds into more cheese, it turns out. He easily replies. Annalie looks concerned, to say the least. I certainly hope for the best, Cameron. She says uncertainly. She then turns to Marianne. And Marianne, it's nice of you to be concerned. We all feel better when we have people to rely on, don't you think? Sure. Marianne agrees, although her bluntness makes it the genuineness of the statement sound questionable. Catherine raises her hand, and Annalie calls on her. Your favorite cheese is an Asagio, is it? She guesses. Cameron reels back as if, if it's stung. <laughs> How'd you know? He sputters. I figured as a self-proclaimed bona fide cheese lover that you'd be hard-pressed to choose a favorite. So naturally, I reasoned you'd have no favorite and instead love them all equally. Catherine explains, staring at him as if you were mild entertainment. No, oh, Unity, you got me, man. That's exactly it. I want to share all types of cheese with everyone. That's my dream, Cameron shouts, punching at the air to emphasize his words. Catherine smiles at him. That's a lovely dream, Cameron. Yes, believe in your dreams, Cameron. That's the first step. Annalie exclaims, clapping her hands together. Catherine, that point goes to you. Any she takers on next? She used to ask. I may as well ride my win. I shall go, if that's agreeable. Catherine asks politely. Annalie motions her on. By all means. Catherine offers her a grateful smile. I am afraid of crows, I enjoy drawing in my spare time, and I am bad at darts. She lists. For once, no one immediately tries to guess. There is a moment of silence before Mary Ann lets out a defeated sigh. <sighs> Man, I have no clue. Any of those could be the lie. Catherine looks rather pleased at the omission. <laughs> that was the point. She hums. Remy groans. No kidding. Marie turns to Swan. Swan, don't you know we're the best? You gotta know which one's the lie. She reasons. Well, hey, I'm in the same boat as the rest of you. Uh, I mean, I know she draws, but... Marie Ann winces. Ouch, you've known her for how long? She questions. Uh, month? No, 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 longer than that. Uh, look, I haven't exactly been keeping count. I think that's just called being a bad friend. Remy points out. Annalie is quick to interject. Now, now, maybe they just haven't had proper chance to learn these things. Let's not make assumptions about a friendship we know nothing about. She lightly scolds. Ah, my bad, Remy says, a little regretfully. Catherine weighs it off. No harm done. She assures. Annalie starts doing a small jig in place as an outlet for all her ex excess excitement. Excellent. Communication, you two. Oh, I have an idea. Rem uh, Remy, why don't you try to guess Catherine's lie? She suggests, looking more than a little silly do while doing the dance. Remy, our strongest soldier, manages to per briefly glance at Annalie without letting his perplexion show. Uh, sure, let me think for a sec. It's the darts, isn't it? He guesses. Catherine tilts his head 
tilts her head up curiously. May I ask your reasoning? She requests. I know, Krios. You're right to fear them. Remy states more than a little ominously. Catherine looks mildly unsettled for a moment. Annalie clears her throat, her dance session dying as soon as it had begun. Oh, to mourn so soon. Yes, well, it's touching that you trust us with one of your fears, Catherine. She manages, practically forcing the cheer back into the air. That's one point for Remy, and I only think we have three people left. So, Dan, Marianne, and Mershi. Which of you would like to go next? Mm, <laughs> I, think I'll, I think I'll go. Why not? Annalie nods encouragingly. Dan gives a lazy wave. I've never been in love. I'm studying botany in college, and my favorite color is periwinkle. Periwinkle? Is that, like, even a real color? Janet questions. <laughs> oh no, is it? Dan replies, intentionally being unhelpful. Cameron brings a hand to his chin. It has to be real, otherwise it'd be a lie. Wait, he mumbles. Janet shakes her head. But, like, that'd be too obvious. She points out. Unless he knew we'd think that, Cameron says looking around the circle as if he was about to have a eureka moment. <laughs> You're free to guess if you want to find out if it's real. Uh, but if I, like, guess wrong, then I'll, like, still have no points. Janet complains. Cameron lays a hand on Janet's shoulder. It's okay, Janet. You're not alone, he passionately declares. Swan suddenly brings her fist against... Swan suddenly brings her fist against her open palm in realization. Oh shoot, I forgot about the points! A Emily, can I take a guess? She asks. Go ahead, but remember to raise your hand next time. Annalie allows. Oh my god, sorry. Okay, Mr. Flower Man. It's gotta be that you've never been in love. Dan grins. <laughs> nope, nice try though. Uh, but, but, what? Dan swan sputters, taking it back. You know so much about it! Ow! I'm just familiar with the game, that's all. Dan replies innocently. <laughs> I was this close to a point! Swan groans, kicking at the floor. Annalise si smiles sympathetically. There, there, it's alright. You have plenty of chances left. Damien then raises his hand. Damien, it's your guess. Damien wastes no time. Then you must not be studying botany. He guesses confidently, shooting a smug look at Swan's way. Ding ding ding! Now I go. Oh, my bad. Annalee, do it with me. Ding ding ding! ding. <laughs> yeah. Right on the money. Dan replies with a low effort bow. No! Better luck next time, Damien taunts. Swan, clutch it. Clenches her hand into a fist at her sides. It's not over yet! She hisses, but for turning away and refusing to look at him. Honestly, you could watch two toddlers having the same argument, and the feelings it evoked would not change. Honestly, this felt a little weird coming from Swan. If she were fighting with Kitty, sure, yeah, but Damien? What a lovely competitive spirit you two have. <laughs> Anna Annalie awkwardly comments. Then, if you're not studying botany, then what are you studying, if you don't mind me asking? She asks, clearly trying to redirect the conversation. Well, I, I don't... <laughs> I don't mind. I, you could say I'm taking a bit of a break at the moment, but I'm in school for <laughs> accounting, which is kind of funny, because I, like, hate it. Such a drag, and then all the stable jobs are, aren't they? It sucks! Dan complains, idly picking at the edge of his shirt. He seems pretty down. Dan's a pretty funny guy, so seeing him like this, it's a bit of a first. Annalie frowns. You're going to school for something you hate? That's so sad. It's sad that you feel like it's something you have to do. She says. Have you ever considered doing something else? She asks gently. I do sometimes, but... <laughs> what I've been working off... What have I been working for all this time if I just kind of give up, you know? 
Dan manages a wiry smile, running a hand through his hair. and only tries to meet his eyes, but Dan makes it difficult. Finally, he looks. Oh, okay. Just because you changed your course in life doesn't mean it's all that all effort from before is for nothing. I'm sure it's done some things for you that you just haven't realized yet. So why don't you just take the rest of your time here at Oasis to consider what you truly want for yourself? It helps when you're among friends. She suggests. Dan hesitates before all resistance just falls away. Why not? I'll give it some thought. He agrees. And Ellie beams, bouncing in place. Excellent! I'm so proud of you, Dan. It takes a lot of courage to ask yourself big questions like that. Right, everyone? She asks, looking eagerly around the circle. Before anyone else can even hope to agree, Janet interjects. I can't, like, believe Periwinkle is real. She says in disbelief, staring into the void. The wholesome atmosphere is probably shattered. Marianne blinks elishly at her. You're still on that? She asks incredulously. Well, like, yeah. Janet replies, as if it was obvious. I'm sorry to say, Janet, but its realness was never in question for the rest of us. Catherine politely clarifies. Cameron balks. Well, for real? We're the only ones? Uh, I'm sure Dan would be glad to introduce you to the world of to the world of Periwinkle and uh, some other time. Annalise suggests, a little downtrodden after her e efforts were more or less squandered. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure, whatever. Annalise claps. So, moving on, what's another- that's another point to Damien. Who's next? Might as well not go last, so I'll go. Marianne sighs. All right, go ahead. Annalise cheers. There's a moment of silence. Why is this suddenly hard? Marianne grumbles. There's no need to rush. Annalie starts. Marianne holds up a hand to stop her. No, it's just hard to come up with facts about myself, I guess. I'm not used to this. Then that's all the more reason to do it. You should feel comfortable talking about yourself because you're fan a fantastic person. Just try digging deep and say the first thing that comes to mind. We aren't here to judge. Annalise suggests offering a reassuring smile. Uh, okay, uh, I work as a guard for the Aegean Vanguard. I am only, I'm an only child and I learned to ride when I was nine. Is that good? Marianne rattles off, a little uncertain. That's great, Marianne. Annalie exclaims. I knew you could do it. Now, who wants to guess? Damien's sh hand shoots in the air. I know the answer. He states loudly. Oh my goodness. Uh, no fair! You didn't even wait until she was done! Damien fixes Spawn with a blank stare. That is irrelevant to the fact that I know her lie. <laughs> That's all well and good, Damien, but it's important to raise our hands, so it's fair. I'll let you guess this time because you didn't mean anything bad by it. But keep that in mind, okay? Annalise says. But uh, that's cheating! Swan protests, looking mildly betrayed. Damien on the other hand just frowns but accepts it. Very well. Annalise nods, pleased. Good. She then turns to Swan. And Swan, I've looked at the other- bleh, bleh. I've looked the other way when you've been a little too overeager, haven't I? Uh, well, maybe, but- Swan argues. And Annalee interjects. Then Damien deserves the same consideration. Fine. I'm sorry. Damien impatiently taps a finger against his arm. Might I guess now? He asks fairly politely of all things considered. Annalee nods. Go ahead, Damien. She did not learn to ride when she was nine. Damien states confidently. Marianne shrugs. <laughs> I guess you got me. No, oh, I was gonna guess that. Swan complains, crossing her arms. Dan, Damien pointedly ignores Swan. You hesitated too much before you mentioned your age. He gave you away. He, he explains. 
See, I realized I still needed to lie, but I already mentioned learning to ride, so I had to improvise. Mariana mints, but doesn't seem terribly torn up about it. Wait, so you know how to ride? Swan questions. Distressed, quickly, forgotten. Yeah, I learned when I was 11. Marianne answers. Oh! Then that's another point to Damien. You're really on a roll, which leaves us Marshy. Ah, oh, it's my turn. Marshy echoes, trying to drag her brain out of the fog town. This headache of yours is really not helping things. Annalie nods. Yep, take it away, Marshy. Uh, uh, okay. Um, so I'm really, really good at lying. Oh, and this one time I thought mud cake was actually made out of mud. And one point I fell out of the sky and left a crater in the ground. Marshy rattles off, doing her best to not get her troops mixed up with her lie. Cameron brings his hand to his chest. Hold on. Hold on. Roll that back. Did you just say fell out of the sky and left a crater? That's gotta be a lie. You'd be dead. Cameron stresses, staring at Marshy as if she'd just grown a third head. Cameron. Annalie starts. Right, sorry. Forgot to raise my hand. <laughs> Cameron apologizes, holding up his hands apologetically. Thank you. Annalie says, satisfied. Oh no. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone else can raise their hand, because that's wrong. <laughs> Cameron gasps. What? You're like, serious? Janet presses. Yeah, Swan, Dan, back me up. Marshy urges. Did you see it happen? Cameron demands. Dan shakes his head. Nope. He just also fell from the sky. He reveals. Uh, yeah, the crater I made was huge. Cameron and Janet, Janet both let out a ha. <laughs> what? It's a, it's a traveler thing. Weird. Guess I'm done. Cameron sighs. And Ellie looks around the circle. Anyone else want to try? She questions. Remy raises his hand and Emily smiles. Remy, thank you for raising your hand. Go ahead. I'm gonna go with you being a good liar, Remy guesses. Marcy dramatically deflates. How did you guess? Good liars don't have to say they're good? Remy replies, wearing a small smile. Heck. Okay, that's one final point for Remy, and that's it for Two Truths and a Lie, everyone. Annalie announces before looking Altair's way. Altair, you kept track of the points, right? She questions. Altair glances up from a small notepad. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and announce the results? I'm so excited to find out who won! Annalie prompts, practically bouncing in place. Damien seemed equally invested, although he was not quite bouncing in place. Rather, he was staring intently at Altair. If Altair was bothered by the weight of Damon's gaze, he didn't react. Fine. First, in first place, with three points, is... Damien, congratulations. He reads in the most unenthused voice. Annalise st starts enthusiastically clapping, and soon a few other people politely join in. Damien basks in the glory, looking smugger than ever. Swan sulks at her end of the circle. Once a round of applause trailed off, Altair looked to the second place. In second place, with two points, is Dan. Good job. You're not last. He says half-heartedly. Annalie doesn't have to start the round of applause this time. The circle naturally offers Dan his due praise. Altair clears his throat in the clapping quiet. And with a three-way tie for third, with one point each, is Remy, Catherine, and Marshy. He finishes. The rest of you didn't even get a single point. Sad. But there's no reason to be sad. We have more games, after all. Annalie hurriedly adds. Damien, running off the high of his victory, turns back to Annalie. How do I win them again? Oh my god. How do I win them, he demands. There's a pregnant pause. Well... The, Annalie starts. These next two games are more like icebreakers. Damien stares at her blankly. So can I win them? He asks incredulously. You're a winner if you participate. Annalie chirps in response. Damien stares at Annalie as if she'd suddenly grown a third head. 
but she merely smiles at him patiently. Eventually, he adverts his gaze, but he's clearly displeased. Emily turns back to the rest of the circle. Anyway, the next game we're going to be playing is called Deserted Island. We play by going around in a circle and telling everyone what you'd bring if you were to be stuck on a deserted island. Easy enough, right? She explains. Remy raises his hand. So it can be anything? He asks. As long as it's an item. Oh, I have a fun idea. Instead of volunteering, why don't we have whoever goes pick the next person? Annalise suggests. Janet's face twists with confusion. Wait, so... She starts trailing off. Annalise considers for a moment. Oh, hold on, I lost my place. Okay. Here, let me, go, let me show you. If I'm going to be stranded on a deserted island, I would take my favorite book so I wouldn't be bored. And I choose Marshy to be next. Huh? Why me? And only nods. <laughs> yep. And after you, after you go, you'll choose the next person. See? She replies. Oh, I like get it now. Janet explains. Exclaims. Great. Now, Marshy, what would you take? you if you were going to be stranded on a deserted island? Annalie asks, looking at Marcia expectantly. Marcia, your brain blanks, and you're left scr um, scrambling for crumbs. Ah, uh, um, uh, 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 Sunny! It, it needs to be an item, Marcia. Annalie patiently reminds. An item? What in the world could be useful on a deserted island? Uh... And I like for all her patients decides to have mercy. Okay, never mind. You're fine. Great job, Marshy. Why don't you pick who's going next? She should just. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny. Dan. Dan takes the nomination in stride. <laughs> Sweet. So if I was stranded, I'd probably like take a survival kit. He decides. As for who's next, <laughs> why not Janet? If I were, like, stranded on a deserted island, I'd, like, take an umbrella. The sun hurts me. Janet explains, shuddering at the mere thought of those dreaded sun rays. Marianne, you're, like, next. She says, pointing her way. Marianne takes a moment to mull over the question before answering. If I were stranded, I'd bring my armor. It's kept me safe this long. She finally says. Cameron, you go. <laughs> no question, I'd bring cheese. If I'm stranded, I might as well enjoy my stay, right? Cameron reasons. Hey, Remy, you're up, he calls. Birdseed, Remy says. Cameron pauses. Birdseed? He echoes uncertainly. Remy just nods. Yes, birdseed, because the crows will follow and they demand food. He explains simply, as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. Catherine represses a shudder and eyes eyes Remy critically. The crows? She repeats, as if it would grant her clarity. Remy shrugs. One of them has a knife. I'll be fine as long as they're happy. Okay. Uh, that, are you okay? Anna like questions, mildly confused. As long as the crows are happy, Remy answers simply. Anna like just nods at that. Uh-huh. Uh, let's... Uh, let's just let us know if the crows are ever unhappy, okay? Uh, Catherine, why don't you go next? She should just tend to Julie. <laughs> Catherine takes a moment to respond, but not. Certainly. Um, if I were to be stranded, I would bring my blade. She says, managing to shake off any lingering nerves. Now, Damien, what would you bring? She asks. My wand. I go nowhere without it. Da Damien replies bluntly, sending a seething glare in Altair's direction. Catherine smiles. Yes, it never feels quite right to be without your weapon, does it? She agrees. No. D Damien states curtly, without even bothering to look in Catherine's way. Annalie is quick to intervene. Uh, yes, well, uh, Swan, why don't you- what, what would you bring? She asks. A boat! Annalie brightens. Oh, you know how to steer one? She inquires. Nope. Swan says cheerfully. Well, there's no better time to learn than if you're on a, if you're stranded. Annalee reasons. <laughs> Great answers, everyone. That wraps up Deserted Island and brings us to our final game. 
she declares. This game is called I Am. It's called the I Am Game, and it's where you share positive affirmations about yourself, like I am enough, or I am compassionate. It's good to be able to say nice things about yourself, because oftentimes we aren't very kind to ourselves. You may not even notice, but whenever you make mis make a mistake or when you don't do as well, you hope you might put yourself as well as you hope that you might put yourself down. You might say, Annalie, you're so stupid! Or, Annalie, why can't you just get it right? That kind of thinking wears, us, wears on all of us. And it's the kind of... It's kind of a struggle... We, it's the kind of struggle we should share with our friends, right, Altair? Right. Altair hops. This is a little more personal. So I'm going to split you all into smaller groups for this activity. Me and Altair will also be walking around and monitoring things. So if you need extra support working through your feelings, we'll, be, we'll still be nearby. Emily explains. Explains. Okay, so let's have Marshy, Dan, and Swan in one group. In group two, Catherine, Remy, and Damien. And for group three, Marianne, Janet, and Cameron. Get together in your groups and we'll, when you're ready, and we'll go for about ten minutes. Let's start. All around you, the circle begins to dissipate, and people splinter off into their own groups. Dan, Swan, and Marshy, you three black guys. At least this isn't your first time you three have prepared at. Group time. Ugh.